What's up guys, Nathan here. Today I'm going to give you the top five things that you will never see a good poker player do. In fact, if you see anybody doing these five things at your poker table, it is likely you are in a good game. I would stick around. It's probably going to be pretty profitable for you. Let's dive into it. Counting down from five to one. Here we go. Number five is bluffing the fish. Guys, no good poker player in the history of this game will ever try to bluff the players who don't like to fold. Why would you ever do that? It makes no sense. And by by the way, I'm going to walk you through examples for every single thing on this list. So as an example, you've got ace queen offsuit, ace of spades, and queen of diamonds, and you're versus one of our fishy friends. Now, I probably don't need to go into detail about these players for you. If you played any amount of poker, you've seen them. They like to limp a lot, which is just calling preflop. They like to play a ton of hands. They like to call down with any kind of trashy draw, anything. They like to play any trashy hands, of course, as well. They will call any bluff ears of course they hate to fold on and on guys you know the kind of player type i'm talking about so on the river the board reads the king of diamonds jack of spades seven of diamonds four of clubs and three of diamonds so let's talk about this board first of all the most important thing of course is we have absolutely nothing on this board we have ace high there are very few hands that we can beat any pair beats us at this point even if they have pocket twos that hand beats us and most fish will not fold pocket twos on this board the other important thing to note is that the flush draw did come through on the river, meaning there are three diamonds on the board, so they could have hit that as well. And there are multiple draws that came through. The 5-6 straight draw also came through on the river. If they have 5-6, they now have a straight. There's a ton of ridiculous two-pair hands, like a jack-4 four or a 4-deuce or a 7-6 or what have you. Fish play all these hands, guys, and they're not folding any of them. So what should you do in this spot? Well, a lot of people will get frustrated, especially especially if they've been having a bad day at the poker table and they'll try to run some crazy bluff here. They'll try to make a big bet and represent the diamonds or ace king or something like that. Guys, please, please do not do this. The best thing you can do in this spot and it's not even close is to simply check and give up. Once again, guys, you don't make money in poker by trying to bluff the calling stations, the specific player types who absolutely hate to fold and that's the fish. So good poker players know that you can't win them all guys when you're in a situation like this check give up and move on to the next hands all right guys thing number four you will never see a good poker player doing and that is playing trashy hands that of course is what fish do most bad players these days are playing all sorts of junk like a king nine offsuit or an eight six offsuit and when i say offsuit by the way i'm just talking about two different suits so the king of hearts and nine of spades guys you don't make money playing these hands in poker because you're simply going to be up against a superior hand most of the time most good tight players in today's games are only going to be playing hands like ace king king queen and king jack and so therefore if you play a hand like king nine you're often going to find yourself in a situation where you hit your king on the flop and the other player has a higher kicker and you have a very very small percent chance to win this is why bad players lose because they play hands like this that put them in a mathematically disadvantageous position to begin the hand this is the worst thing you possibly want to do in poker so guys as an example as a rough range of hands to play i would recommend playing a much tighter range of pocket aces down to pocket twos ace king ace queen ace jack ace ten king queen king jack queen jack and a couple suited connectors so like a 10 9 suited a 9 8 suited and an 8 7 suited which is what the s means there so for example eight of diamonds seven of diamonds by the way if you want to see all the charts of the hands that i recommend those are included in my free poker cheat sheet i'll link that up in the description below bottom line guys don't fight the mouth in poker play superior hands don't play trashy hands like the fish and you're going to have a lot more success in this game let's move on to thing number three that you're never going to see a good poker player doing and that is paying off the nits so guys let's talk about the other player type now the nits the rocks these are the players who sit around playing incredibly tight all the hands that i just told you they're not even playing all of those they're literally waiting for aces kings queens they're trying to hit a set like a three of a kind on the flop they're waiting for their flush guys these are the players who when they finally make a bet or a raise trust me they have it they're not bluffing you so you don't want to play into their game so for example you pick up pocket aces ace of spades and ace of diamonds and a knit raises you on the turn of nine of diamonds jack of spades eight of diamonds and five of clubs guys there are so many different possibilities that a knit can have on this board they have probably successfully set mind you meaning that they probably have a hand like pocket nines pocket jacks pocket 
pocket eights or pocket fives. Queen 10 also flopped a straight on this board and seven six turned the straight on this board. Guys, bottom line, the tightest, most passive players at the table, which is what the nits and rocks are, are simply not going to raise you on what I call the big money streets, the turn and river with a one pair of hand. They are always doing this with two pair or better. There's two pairs on this board as well, jack eight, jack nine. If they have a hand that you actually beat here, like a king jack or a pocket queens, they're just going to call. That's what passive players do, guys. So when they raise you here, serious alarm bells need to be going off. And quite frankly, you need to be folding your hand because you have a very, very small amount of odds to win if they have a hand like pocket nines on this board. All right, guys, let's move on to thing number two that you're never going to see a good poker player doing, and that is limping. So we already talked about that, how this is one of the favorite things for all our fishy friends to do, and that is before the flop, they will just call the blind. So for example, if you're playing in a $1, $2 cash game, they will just call the $2. Guys, you never want to be doing this for the simple reason that you're putting yourself in a passive position to start the hand. No good poker player would ever do this. They instead want to take control of the pot right away because they know this is going to make it much easier for them to win the hand later on. So for example, you look down at king, queen, king of spades, and queen of diamonds on the button, and there are three people who've already limped. So a lot of amateurs in particular will go, well, just limp along here. You know, I'll just try to go see a cheap flop. But guys, good poker players think differently, of course. They're going to jack it up here, guys, to a minimum of seven times the blind. So for example, once again, if you're playing in a $1, $2 cash game, that would be about $14. And the reason why I picked that number is because I usually raise around three or four times the blind as my standard opening raise size. And then I add one big blind on top per limper. So there's three limpers in here. So that of course is where I got the seven X figure from. However, I do need to point out guys, if you're playing in a super loose, low stakes game, especially if you're playing in a home game or one cent, two cent on the internet, $1, $2 live and a lot of people have been having some drinks perhaps and they're splashing around and playing anything guys you might want to try making it more make it 10x make it 15x basically bottom line guys you want to aim for one color and if when you make it 7x here you're still getting three four five colors that's not the right amount you want to make it more but the bottom line guys is let people know that they are never going to limp your button i don't have time in this video to get into position but especially when you're on the button here do not ever allow people to limp your blind by the way i've made other videos talking about position here you can check those out but the bottom line is the button is the best seat at the table do not allow anyone to limp when you're on that seat or any other seat to be honest raise it up take control and you're going to have a lot more success in poker all right guys the number one thing that you're never going to see good poker players doing and that is going on tilt getting frustrated that once again is what amateurs do Guys, I can tell you from my nearly 20 years in this game, 10 plus years as a professional and having coached hundreds of students in the small and mid stakes games, this is the number one thing that holds them back and that is getting frustrated every single time they get a bad beat. For example, you've got two red aces, ace of hearts, ace of diamonds, and a fish goes all in before the flop, you call and they hit their lucky six on the flop. Guys, it's gonna happen close to 20% of the time. There is nothing you can do here. Of course you want to call off all your chips when you have the best hand in poker, but we have to make peace with the fact that you're going to lose the hand one out of five times, even though you did everything right. This is something that is very difficult for a lot of people to accept in this game, because in most other games out there, if you make the correct play, you get to win all of the money. You get all of the benefits, but that's not the way it works in poker, guys. And that is why poker is so profitable, because the fish can get lucky one out of five times, one out of four times and that keeps them coming back for more putting in more of their money and ultimately giving it all away to you in the end guys when a fish gets lucky against you it doesn't mean the site's rigged it doesn't mean you're the most unlucky poker player in the world it's actually just math all right guys like and subscribe if you found this one helpful and if you want to know my entire strategy to smash the small and mid stakes games make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet that will be the top link in the description below thanks a lot for watching guys all the best at the poker tables unless you're on mine